The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the De not December, the January 3rd. Uh, this is the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find, we can find the good in everything out there. And that's important. We can find the good in every set of circumstances. Today, you and I are going to check out the circumstances of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call. You can do that at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. Just send me an email, but do it early. Steve at TFNN.com. Please put uh, in the subject heading radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, General Lenny Ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fabulous, fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got all the indices in the red out there, but nothing has been broken just yet. We'll go take a look at that. The Dow is off 160. What did Stevie mean by it? nothing has been broken? Well, support has not been broken. Now, that's key. We'll take a look at that. We'll talk about that. The S&P is down 12 bucks, about four tenths of a percent to the downside. And the X100 off 35. Russell's only down four bucks. Uh, semis are off twenty dollars. That's a little over one percent there. The leader, uh, percentage-wise, to the downside. Spot volatility X trade out to 13.34. I believe that is just below its 50-day exponential moving average out there. Gold's up 24 bucks, trading out at 15.51 and change. Silver's up 10 cents, trading out at 18.16. Light sweet crude up a buck 47, 62.65 is the print out there natural gas has turned green we'll certainly take a look at that i know everybody's got interest or not everybody but many have interested natural gas i lead the charge dollar wise the upside not unusual on a day like today after a strike over in iraq uh, you've got northrop grumman leading the charge of five percent seventeen dollars and change lockheed martin not far behind 15 bucks and about four percent Tesla's up 15 bucks, about 3.5%. Chipotle's up 10, a little over 1%. Lamb, Weston Holdings up 12% to the downside. It's Amazon off $18, about 1%. Booking Holdings down 13. Insight Corp off 8, nearly 10%. Broadcom down 5, about 1.5%. So let's begin by taking a look at the markets. What's going on out here? <clears throat> And uh, we'll begin by looking at our TAS daily profiles. And what it is that we see right now, if you take a look at the very left-hand panel, that's the ES Mini. And price is trading above the top of its profile, 32.41.60. Uh, can't trade to 60, but we'll just call 32.41.50 because you can do that. And we're trading right now, or it's trading right now. I take that back. Yeah, no, it is trading at 32.44.50. Above the top of the box, so it is above resistance out there. Folks, that is not bearish. Did you hear me? Those of you that are short, that is not bearish. If you take a look at the NASDAQ, whew, talk about being on fire out here, uh, just barely got below the top of its daily profile, we quickly rejected that, and it is back off to the races. The Dow, uh, it has a bearish structured profile out there. That is panel number three. You should be able to see that the top is closer to the center, or the center is closer to the top than the center being closer to the bottom. There are sellers clearly at 28,625, buyers clearly at 28,292, and there's both buyers and sellers at 28,530. So when you have that um, bearish structured box because a center where there's both buyers and sellers, so sellers, and then sellers close to 28,625, there's a group of people that if this market were bearish, they would be able to push price down. They have not done that. 
Now, I don't know what the end of the day reading is going to be, but I can tell you at 111 in the afternoon, these markets are not bearish. Be very, very, did I say very? I mean very careful out there if that's the side that you are on. Now, somebody wrote in, they said Steve-O. Why didn't they actually said Steve? They didn't say Steve-O. But you can say Steve-O. You can say Steve Arino. You can say Stevie. It doesn't matter. You can call me anything. But the question was, why do you key in on these TAS market profiles so much? Look, I think the most important thing that you and I can do is understand where support and resistance is. We need to be able to understand the difference between a pullback into support, which is a buying opportunity, versus closing below support, which could then signal to you a change in trend. And these TAS market profiles are just one tool that you and I can use to identify levels of support or resistance. Let me give you a good example out here. Let's say I mentioned, you know, hey, if you're short, you're not getting any short signals here as we speak right now. Let's go back. Now, what I have on my chart right now, this is a this is a weekly time frame chart for the ES mini. And all I'm going to show right now are the uh, these green lines are are weekly. So these are weekly task market profiles. I'm not showing the center of the box because for this purpose here, I just want to be able to show you where support and resistance is. And this takes us back into the 2007 top. Now, when you see the market close below the bottom of a box out here, in this case, the weekly area, it's signaling to you and I that we've got a change in trend, especially if you've got two weeks below that area. Likewise, if you close above the top of the weekly profile, it's telling you that you are in all-out breakout mode out here. Take a look at the 2000 coming back to the high. The high that formed out here in 2007 was during the week of October, October 8th. That was the beginning of the week, 2007. That's where we made the high. You can see prior to that here, just simply going back in the 2006 time frame, uh, any uh, the the ES mini was finding support at the bottom of its weekly profile. The first time that we saw a break of a weekly profile in 2007 was the end of the year, December 31st. December 31st, that that was the uh, that began that uh, weekly candle out there. You saw a clear close below the bottom of that profile out here. What I want you to also notice is that, remember, at the top of those profiles is where sellers are at. So any counter trend rally in a move is going to find resistance there. So you're seeing this 2007. You can see that there was a nice counter trend rally back in August of 2008. But all price was doing was consolidating, trading and trading in the resistance, which held out there. So without these lines on our chart, we have no idea, no clear idea where buyers and sellers are. Yeah, sure, we can use bullish and bearish reversal candles out there, and that helps us to identify areas of support or resistance, but they don't work anywhere near as good as this. Where they do work well is being able to help us confirm tops and bottoms of a pattern out there. But here, just simply understanding these market profiles, where support and resistance is at. In fact, if you take a look just at the weekly profiles out here for the ES Mini, the first time in the, the indication of a that the bear market was over was the week of May 4th, 2009. Close above the top of the weekly box. Following week was a second close above the top of that weekly profile. Hey, where are we now as we go into the breakout here? See if we can get over there. Can we do it quickly? We're so far above the top of the market profile on a weekly basis, 29.53. You'd have to close below 28.67 for change in trend. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to uh, uh, Martin, uh, Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing great, Steve. Thank you for taking the call. My pleasure. My pleasure. So uh, Slack Technologies, ticker symbol uh, W-O-R-K. I've heard a lot about this. A couple of my friends use this in their businesses out here. And uh, this is an IPO that takes us back into uh, the middle of uh, last year. Uh, clearly not a lot of happy um, uh, stockholders. Uh, inside of uh, this uh, equity, this was trading up at about 42 bucks, trading at 22.70 uh, as we speak. Uh, Brent, how can I help you? What are you looking at here? I was considering potentially taking a long position just on the weakness today, but I want to get your take on it and see what what your thoughts were. Sure. Okay. So you know, one of the things. Uh, so just it's 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 nice and timely uh, that that question because. We, did, we spent the last segment just taking a look at the TAS market profiles and identifying support and resistance and helping us to see if there's a change in trend. So what we do know is this instrument here has been just simply, it's been selling off ever since this went public. And uh, right now, what it did yesterday was price did close just above the top of its daily profile. I like to see two closes there. That's 22.86, by the way. Right now, though, trading at 22.69. So we don't have a confirmed, we'll call it a breakout or a change in trend signal on the daily time frame. You'll notice here, folks, if you're looking at my uh, charts, the weekly and the monthly do not have any market profile information. There's just not enough data because of when this thing had an IPO. So I would be more comfortable saying that, yeah, this thing has broken out if, in fact, price had clo would close above 22.86 again today. That would say, okay, if not, then maybe this will just is simply consolidating with inside that daily profile print. It's a bullish structured box, and the buy areas there would be 21.16 to 21. Uh, 41. But if it does close above 2286, then I'd say, okay, uh, this thing looks like it's bottom from a profile perspective. You know, what's going on on the uh, on the other charts out there? So as I pull over my other, my white background chart, what we can see is that when this was moving lower, this did create a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom 
pattern and signal, and that was on November 13th. Now, it hasn't done a lot since then, um, but that bottom hasn't been seen. So now we've got a secondary reason to say, okay, Slack may have a bottom, ticker symbol, folks, WR. W-O-R-K, but today is going to be bar number nine of a TD setup nine count and back below that support. So this would say to me that a better buy on uh, work would be around 2185. That's the oscillator on change line. So between 2116 and 2185 on a pullback. But the daily time frame shows a definite bottom signal and something worth uh, uh, something worth uh, focusing on. The weekly time frame chart, granted, we don't have market profile information, but what we do have is we also have a weekly roads momentum indicator signal. Now, unfortunately, there's still not enough data here to create an oscillator and change line level out here. But the weekly and the daily, Brent, say you're in the right area. The question is, when's the right time? Does that help? Oh, it does very much so, Steve. I think just being a little more patient um, is going to be uh, – beneficial and unless it were to close above that level that you stated so i think i'm just going to give it a little time and see if it can't pull back a bit more to that other support level yeah yeah it, it, but but you've, what's nice about this is you have you've got everything you wanted which was bottom signals on the daily and then on the weekly and now it's a matter of uh, us just figuring out hey where's the war so to speak, right? Where are sellers? Where are buyers? And since this is sitting right up in the seller area and a TD setup nine count, I think patience is is uh, is in order. Between 2116 and 2185 is where I'd be looking to uh, to uh, begin a position here. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. You have a great day. Have a you nice bet. weekend, and I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. You take care. Sounds great. Thanks so much for calling. Brent in Martinez, California. Now, uh, before we, in that first segment, as we were in, we were taking a look at market profiles. And from the market profile data out here, we're saying, hey, look, there's there. be careful being short because there's there's been no change in trend out here. That doesn't mean that uh, the high of last night, um, you know, was not was 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 not the high. It, it may have been. I mean, if we take a look at the ES, the NQ, and the Dow, just going back to that, you will see that today's bar has exceeded the high of yesterday's bar for each of those three contracts. You'll also see that today's bar has exceeded the low of yesterday for those three contracts. So that, as long as these, as long as price trades one tick, in the direction to the downside, that means below the open from last night at six o'clock. Then that would generate a key reversal session. Now it could be generating; a, it would be generating a key reversal session, uh, and what is potentially the completion of a pattern? What pattern? Well, you've got several. One, you've got the erosion momentum indicator signal that, in effect, went into place uh, last night. You've got the A to B equal CD pattern out here, the 1 to 1.618. This currently inside the ESMA does show a dark cloud cover candidate out here. So I can understand the wanting to pull the trigger out there. But without a confirmation, without price trading below support right now, it's very risky to, to, to in my opinion, to take that position just yet. And I'm the one that's uh, suggesting out there that we're going to see a bear market in 2020. Okay, but just like what Brent and I are trying to do is to try to time this thing as best as we can. If we take a look at the NQ, no bearish reversal candle. Price trade above Stevie's green line. It is a key reversal session, at least at this stage of the game, and it has a TD nine count. So this has got the A to B equals CD. It's got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. It's got a TD nine count, the NQ that is. And so this is saying, hey, be careful. But we need to see some other levels of of support. We need to see levels of support, not other levels, just levels of support broken for good. And I'm not talking intraday. We're talking about the body of the candle, which is truly the essence of price, not the screaming, meme emotional wicks of the candles out there, but the actual body of the candle. If we take a look at the Dow out here, again, an A to B equals CD pattern. That's the only pattern that is in play here to help us identify the top. But if there was a top, if there really are sellers that are in control, then we should see some other things. Well, what are those other things? Excellent question. Well, a couple of those other things would be we should see price trading below uh, Apogee. 
That is the uh, lunar pivot point that uh, forms twice a, a month out here. There's apogee and there's perigee. Um, and uh, prices above apogee for the ES, the NQ, and the Adal. That, that, that's a, a warning shot across your ball. If we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator of the New York Stock Exchange, it is still above zero. Above zero above zero and if you take a look at the bottom panel which will show you the spot volatility index it'll show you that it's trading below its 50-day exponential moving average 1363 is the 50-day it's trading at 1335 as we speak these two indicators are saying steve-o bullish 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 yes that is the message now we could take a look at other market breadth data out there, for example. We can go take a look at the S&P 500. Here's the NDX 100. Take a look at the daily time frame. Daily time frame still has a bullish crossover. There are 46 constituents trading above the top of the daily profile, 13 below the bottom. Who's got the edge here? Buyers or sellers? Bulls or bears? And that ain't no bull. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks.
folks. That Dow's up 166, S&P 13, NASDAQ 100 down 40 points out here. Let's go to a couple of questions that have come in. The first one coming in from Sylvia. Sylvia wants to take a look at ticker symbol LVGO. LVGO is Lavongo Health out there. And um, you're looking to take a long position. So this is great. Uh, you know, it, it, everything happens for us, not to us, right? So we spent a little bit of time really taking a look at the uh, task market profiles, the reason why we use them, and how they can help us make decisions about, uh, in this case here, for Sylvia. Should Sylvia take a long position inside of Livongo Health right now and take a look at the daily time frame? Let me just simply expand the chart because there's no weekly or monthly profiles because this too is an IPO. Let's just simply expand this out so that you can clearly clearly see today's daily market profiles. Now, here's the one thing. We know that it formed yesterday, January 2nd. What else do we know? We know that when it formed, uh, price this formed above price. So it formed above price. That says that's a bearish that's a bearish tone when that occurs out here. We know that's a bullish structured box, bottom of which is 25.50, center's 25.88, top is $27. Now, any little counter trend rally should find resistance at 2588 can bust through the bottom of that daily profile but right now price is trading below the bottom of that profile and what that suggests to me Sylvia is now is not the right time to step into a long trade here it was nice when this started moving up and price started breaking the top of those daily profiles without busting through the bottom but now you're be able to now you're able to see you know in essence the change of trend confirmed it really on December the 13th out there. So uh, now is not the time to uh, take a, a long trade. This is also trading below Stevie's green line out here where LVGL broke out. And I don't, can't guarantee that it'll get down there. But if I'm you and I want to take a long position in this, the breakout level would be 1850. That, at, as we speak right now, that would be the place that I would be looking to enter ticker symbol LVGO. And it would all be based upon volume. You mentioned volume in your email. So as long as volume is uh, lightening up as it's pulling back into that area, then you are in pretty good shape. So thanks so much for uh, for uh, writing in. Looks like we've got a caller on the line, Rich in uh, Oregon. Rich, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Good. Uh, thanks for taking my call and Happy New Year. Thank you. Back at you for sure. And uh, uh, we're going to take a look. At, is it Freeport McMoran that you wanted to look at? That's correct. Uh, I've been watching it. Uh, I'm seeing a pullback today. I'm wondering, is this a possible entry point here or not? Well, so let's just first use the daily time frame and our profiles out here. So what I've got up on Tiger TV right now is the daily time frame for Freeport McMoran. Folks, ticker symbol there is FCX. So uh, it is pulling back into a bullish structured profile. And this could be, so because it's a bullish structured profile, Rich, it would either be the price point of 1264 or 1282, where you would be looking to uh, take a long position. So it's trading just at about, uh, it's trading at 1284, 1282 is the center line of that box. So if you wanted to begin a position out here, now I'm going to go look at some other charts to see if there's some other concern, but just simply from pulling back to support, uh, it's there right now, and it could be between 1264 and that uh, 1282 level. That's what the daily time frame shows us. Let's just take a peek in on the weekly and the monthly. Weekly is not providing us with any help because price is above the top of the weekly profile. And the monthly price is right at about the center of its monthly box, which is 1301. Again, you're at 1283 out here. The top of that box would be your target, so 1472. Uh, so that would be your reward risk that you calculation that you would want to do. And this has a 31 cent average true range over the last 10 trading days. So your stop would need to be 31 cents times some factor. I like to use 1.618, which is a Fibonacci expansion. But you can use anything that you want out there. Just make sure it's outside of the average daily true range. Now, when I pull over my other charts, Rich, let's just see the white background and chart. Um, what you've got is you do have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal topping signal today because of that gap to the downside that's your bearish reversal candle out here and so that would say to me I'd be more inclined to be looking at the 1264 level but if price breaks through 1264 and you, so you could put that trade on at, at around 1264 or you can wait to see 
does price test and reject that level. But if you see it close below 1264, this is telling us that it wants to run lower. Now, run lower to where? Shoot, it could pull all the way back to 947 and actually have nothing wrong with it because that's where price most recently broke out on this instrument. Um, I want to pull over the weekly time frame chart and see what other information you and I can glean from it. And one of the things on a weekly time frame chart, I already see the solid green line out here. That solid green line at 1347, that is a significant resistance level. That is where price broke down on a weekly basis using the TD setup nine count. Well, we can see on a weekly basis, this has also formed a TD setup nine count to the upside out here. And on a weekly basis, we can see that Stevie's green line or red line did in fact change colors a few weeks ago. And that tells us of an impending um, hookup between price and that uh, green line to test each other, which right now that's at 11.53. So now, Rich, the more that we look at this, the more that at least I look at this, and I'm just so I'm just narrating what the charts are telling me. You tell me what right. the charts just told you. I was kind of surprised at the pullback. Surprised at the pullback, because uh, I was surprised at the uh, yes, I was. But if you know where resistance is at. And where this had broken down, which was 1347, would that then surprise you that price would turn down from an area where it had broken down before? It shouldn't. So, you know, having this TD set up nine count, understanding where resistance is at, and that's a resistance level. Are, are you saying that because of the incident in Iraq last night? Well, uh, just uh, from what I've been reading about primarily the copper market uh, being, you know, picking up and showing some actual buying in the copper market. And I thought uh, Freeport would be a beneficiary and therefore it would continue climbing due to the copper market. So let's take a look at the copper market. Let's just go take a look at a daily time frame chart. And here what we can see in the daily time frame is uh, what copper has done. It's completed a Gartley sell pattern. So a Gartley sell pattern, you're going to have an A to B equals CD. So let me just kind of draw one in here for you right now uh, so that we can take a look at. So it's completed the A to B equals CD. Now, when I say completed, how does Stevie know that this completed a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD? Well, it's really simple. We wait for the market to tell us. And the way that it tells us, at the end of a pattern, it generates a bearish reversal candle on something that has completed a top. And then what we've seen here with regard to high-grade copper, the March contract, is what price has done today is it's pulled back and has tested support, uh, which is $2.77. But uh, So this has a topping pattern out here. And this would suggest that copper could easily pull back to 263 So your, your analogy about, hey, you know, copper and FCX, copper gave you a, a sell signal uh, one, two, three, four days ago, five days ago. So to the extent okay. that, that so to the extent that you want to invest in FCX because of copper moving, copper's got a confirmed sell pattern out here. It hasn't broken through support. Maybe it holds 276. But um, Rich, if it closed below 276 in the March contract, copper likely headed to 263, and FCX probably headed lower too. Thank you. Know, Thank you. You, you bet. Thanks so much for calling in. Rich in Oregon, that was uh, Freeport, McMoran, and a bonus, Dr. Copper. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, Dow's off 228, S&P down 19, a little bit of a leg to the downside out there to be expected. Oh, uh, what? What did you say, Steve-O? Well, just take a look at this 30-minute time frame chart just so we can take a look at how these chart patterns work. Remember, one of the things we talk about is uh, taking a look at Stevie's green line, red line out there, right? That's an oscillator on change line. When it changes color, we took a look at that uh, with regard to some other instrument uh, uh, in the past half hour out here. But when that changes from red to green, it tells us of an impending meetup between price and that line. And it is that test, which is ongoing right now. It's 143. This is a 30 minute time frame chart. What I can't tell you is where price is going to end up at the end of this 30 minutes. I wish I could tell you that. Here's what I can tell you as of 143. First of all, what we know, let me just get my crosshair out here. That changed color on this bar right here, which was at uh, 1 o'clock, just as we were coming on the air. So we had that change of color. It was either 1230, it was 12.30 or 1 o'clock, between that time frame out there. Tells us that, okay, price and that line are going to catch up to each other. Now, because that line is green, tells us that the price oscillator for the 30-minute time frame is above zero. That is bullish. The test, the bullish test is you pull back, you test it, you bounce off of it, and then it says you're going to go ahead and move higher out there. Now I say that because somebody took a position in uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, spot volatility index um, uh, dynamite uh, uh, ETFs that are out there. And so be careful. Be careful because now it's really not the NQ that you would trade that off of, right? It'd be the ES Mini. So we need to go take a look at the ES Mini for you again on this short term time frame out here. Because if you're in that position, what you really want to see and what you do want to see is you want to see price close below Stevie's green line. Preferably, you'd like to see it be red. It is red here right now. So even though the price oscillator is below zero, unlike the NQ, you've just really had it. You also had a retest of the old breakdown level at 32.36 and a quarter, which price has rejected that. So I, I'd be careful. I would be this. This is communicating, uh, not taking the 
this is communicating to you you want to be short the spot volatility next so maybe you were in the trade i don't know i wasn't paying attention to it and i have a very small window with regard to what goes on in the tiger den when i'm doing the show because i've got all these screens and so forth but I, I just really want to share with you that if you were thinking the volatility index was headed higher right now this is suggesting and not so fast because that and it really the NQ is the is one we saw that, that test on that 30 minute chart really the same thing I'd imagine inside the uh, Russell 2000 and the uh, Dow but just let's do this look I want to do this show here to assist you and being able to identify what the markets are communicating to us you, you, my charts are high. I got to hope that they're showing in the den I hope I've not been doing an entire show out here and nobody has seen these charts, but they, at least they're on Tiger TV. But here you can see the same thing inside the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract, just really testing uh, 28 to 606. That's a Stevie's red line number right now. Let's just uh, finish this off and take a look at the Russell 2000. See if uh, no charts on your end. Wow. Come on, guys in the production room. Let's get the charts up there. Well, what a bummer, really. Well, there at least they're archived on uh, Tiger TV. Yeah, I know you don't want any... MTV. Uh, well, now you've just got to trust me. I wish I, if you take a look at the Russell 2000. Yeah, thanks, Bodai. Uh, if you take a look at, uh, if you could see my chart, what you would be seeing out here is that, um, you know, all price did was come back and test that oscillator on change line. So uh, be careful out there. Let me just show you the, the NQ again, just simply so that you can see it out here and, and understand, you know, how how Stevie is at least reading the message of the market. So you got to wait for the close, right? It's 146. This candle closes at 2 o'clock. But you can see how this uh, red line had turned green uh, again at about the 1 o'clock time frame. And now you're getting that test. The bullish test is that price will close above 88.21 coming into the uh, 2 p.m. time frame out there. And that would suggest that we should see higher price inside of the NQ. So hopefully that uh, helps you out. I know there's a couple other questions that have come in, so let me get to those. I think they're both the same thing. Uh, oh, there's more than uh, two questions. Two folks, Justin and uh, Lee, want to take a look at uh, gold. So just simply the same question basically was, what, you know, what, what are my thoughts on Goldilocks? They're this. I think I have been uh, saying this for, uh, for, for a little bit, uh, the last several days or week out here, uh, and that is that uh, what gold is trying to do is just simply target its uh, weekly horizontal trading range boundary line. That's 1561 out there. So you got 1561. On, and if price is able to close above 1561, then you could have a breakout to 1628. But right now, all price is doing, it's moving up towards a, a key level of resistance. That level of resistance uh, has held. And if it's not able to break that through, break through that, what we will see is price pull back into the 1493 area. If price closed below 1493, the next move would be 1426. And below that would be 1359. I believe when all is said and done at a minimum, when uh, gold does uh, g give the kibosh to uh, folks out there, we'll see that pullback in that 1359 to 1292 to 1240 something area out there. But right now, with regard to uh, Goldilocks, uh, 1561 is the key level that this would need to uh, break out above. If I look at the uh, daily time frame chart out here, um, no, no signs of any kind of a uh, top. Um, you know, wave number six out of seven today being F. That would be number six, uh, bar number six, two sixes. Well, maybe that's the double. You need a third six, though, don't you? Um, uh, but uh, bar six of a TD setup nine count. So the daily is not showing us any kind of a topping pattern out here. Uh, but uh, 12, uh, 1561 is going to be your key level to be uh, watching. If I take a look at silver, if this is still correct out here, I believe that it is, you're going to see silver... Um, with with a bearish candle right now. I don't know what it will be at the end of the day, but it's showing a shooting star right up at resistance, resistance being the top of its box. We can see that its line turned from red to green. This suggests that price and that line will catch up to each other. Right now, that's at about 1760 out there. So that's what's going on when I take a look at the precious metals, when we take a look at uh, gold and silver. I see a question inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at CenturyLink, ticker symbol CTL. So let's go look at it, CTL, see where it's trading. Oh, 
below the daily, below the weekly. And uh, the monthly profiles would suggest us set it back to 1201 to 1083. That's what that shows us right now. Trading at 1254. If I pull over my other charts to help us understand what the market is communicating, or at least CenturyLink, boy, it's got a rose momentum indicator top. And now today, what you're seeing out here, Jimmy, if price closed below 1264, that's its breakout area. That's where price should have. That's where price should pull back to, and hold. And if it doesn't. What it's communicating is CenturyLink wants to move lower. So it had the nice topping pattern out there, ideal. And if you take a look at uh, what it's communicating to you now, it's saying, Jimmy, give me a call when I get to 11.42. 11.42 for CenturyLink. That's what it looks out. That's what it looks like right now. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, the opening call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we got a question here coming in from uh, Hector. And Hector, uh, hey, Happy New Year to you and to Patty as well. Thanks for writing in. But Hector's asking the question, is Snap getting ready to pop? He didn't ask about Crackle. Snap, crackle, and pop, right? But if we take a look at it, here's what we know about Snap. It's trading above the top of the daily and the weekly profile, but would have resistance here at 1836. So is it getting ready to pop? 
Um, let's go take a look what's going on on my other charts out here in the daily time frame. Hector, this is a concern. 1710 is the number. That is where SNAP broke down on its daily chart. It looks like that is basically about the high of the day. If SNAP is going to pop, I mean, a change in trend, something, this would be something other than a counter trend rally. And we got to go look at the weekly, the monthly charts to understand if that's really what's going on here. But this is where it would end, 1710. If you see a close above 1710 for two trading sessions, it's telling you that the uh, chain, that the trend has changed on this because price will have been able to take out a key level of resistance. 1710 is the number. You're trading at 1684 as we speak right now. And the actual high of today is 1710. So how does that work out? 1710 was a number that was uh, uh, created on October 9th. October 9th. Today is January 3rd. It's a line that's out there. How important is it to understand where support and resistance is? Yes, we have a couple different tools that help us to understand that. Breakout support, breakdown resistance, TAS market profiles. We need to know them out there. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here, uh, we're going to see that uh, SNAP has a confirmed road momentum indicator top. And from a weekly standpoint, this is going to be the week after bar number nine. This suggests that if this is just a counter trend rally, it stopped at that uh, level, that 1710 area. So I wouldn't be jumping on the snap bandwagon. Now, if price closes over that 1710 area, different story. But right now, we've got to go with the story that's been told to us by the charts. If we look at the monthly time frame chart out here, I don't really have much. Folks, thanks so much for uh, being here. Uh, uh, and uh, let's all make sure we have the uh, best 2020 that we can. Uh, so thank you to all the wing men, wing women that are there that have my back. Have a fantastic uh, weekend, and we'll see you Monday, 1 o'clock. Take care.